six months ago, I posted my first video outlining my plan to return to tennis after having a heart problem. Since then, I've played a lot of matches, I had some good wins and some tough losses, but slowly and surely, I was starting to find my old level. My goal was to see if I could build my game back up to a level where I could compete with pros on the future circuit. And in this video today, I face my toughest test yet. I'm playing a player who is at that ATP point level and has been ranked as high as inside the top 1,500 players in the world. Let's get straight into the match and see if my game's good enough for the future circuit. So this match that I'm playing here was actually the second round of a men's national tournament in the UK. I managed to win that first round main draw and I had an hour and a half off before I played this match that I'm showing you today. As you can see, I had a great camera angle for this match. I spent about 10 minutes trying to get it sorted before I went on court. But unfortunately, towards the end of the warm up, it did get smacked by Patrick's serve and it fell off. So I had to quickly arrange it. I didn't have time to go out of the court and set it up again. So I had to try and arrange it blind. And this is the best camera angle that I could get, unfortunately. But I still think you can see a lot of the tennis here and you can get get a glimpse of what the match was like so in my previous match I found that I was started the match a little bit passive and as the match went along I started getting more aggressive and got more success that way so I said to myself I'm going to start this match really hitting through the ball and really going for my shots but that doesn't mean spraying unforced areas and going for winning straight away I was going to really try and be consistent but really try and get depth on it As we can see here, Patrick was really hitting through the ball and getting me on the run straight away. So just really wanted to play myself into this first game, make a lot of balls and then let him hit the winners if he was going to do that in the first game. I felt quite a lot of pressure going into this first service game because I knew that if I got this first service game then I could really get myself into the match and if I lost this one then automatically Patrick has the advantage mentally and he can just relax straight away. I really wanted to apply that pressure from the first game of my serve. A little bit lucky there with that net cord, but being really solid with my game and not making many awful stereos. On my returns, I really wanted to slice as few as possible, especially on these clay cords, because it will just sit up on there. So I really wanted to try and hit through it and get as much depth as I can. There in that point, two slices, and then Patrick's at the net straight away. So these are kind of like American clay courts, the kick serves really effective. You get some little lumps of clay, so if you get a good kick on it and you get a little bit of those lumps, it really travels quite far. You don't need to have much speed on it for it to be quite effective. kind of feeling like at two all now my initial opening to the match was kind of a success. I held my first two opening service games and really can just start to relax on my return games now, really going through it. I feel a little bit less pressure to be ultra consistent. I can really start going for a few more line balls. I've played myself into the match now and I can start going for my shots a bit more. It's a really big point here, juice at tool. Really tried to be solid, but I think I still felt like I was playing a little bit too passive with my slicing here.
the two backhands I had in that game. One was a half effective lob and the other one was that short backhand. If I hit through that, I think we'll have got that point. It could have been quite a different story in that game. At this level, any ball that you leave short in the service box is going to get eaten up straight away. So really got to try and get that depth on every ball, especially when going cross court. Even though I lost that point there, I was still happy with the way I played. I came forward, took the advantage, could have just done a bit more with that volley. And then in the next point, carried that confidence forward to the net. Even if I'm not successful coming forward, I still feel like it's the right thing to do because it puts me in the right mindset for the upcoming points to play aggressive when it's a big point and not to start pushing it. Real now, the tension's quite high in the match, there's not much in it, just a couple points here and there, it could go either way in the service game. really like the way I played that point there with the kick serve and then giving myself time to run around with that forehand attack and get my way to the net. Watching this match back here I actually do look pretty relaxed during these points but I definitely remember feeling quite tight and I just really had to work hard with my between point routines with my breathing to calm myself down for each point. So I knew that there really was not much in these points and just got to stay calm and trust my game moving forward. I think at this point I realised that the kick serve was starting to come quite predictable so I needed to start mixing it up a bit more. Otherwise I'm just going to get behind in the points like this and just be given the run around by Patrick somehow managed to get that slice back deep but that's not a sustainable way to win this match got to really try and be the one dictating and moving moving my opponent around really had the mindset not to give up on any balls in this match, really run everything down, make Patrick feel like he really has to hit me off the court and if he doesn't hit close to the lines or hit hard, go for winners and I'm going to be getting behind every ball and getting the ball back in play. Here for all 30 15 up with Patrick Servin. This is a massive point for me here. I do feel like I played it a little bit passive. Body weight not going quite through the ball and then doesn't have the same effect in the movement through the court. And then there it just sits up for Patrick to hit a winner. I wouldn't say I'm pushing it, but I definitely feel like I could have done more of these balls. Maybe get around the backhand side and hit a forehand occasionally. Again, another massive point here at 30 long rallies. Just who can get the ball back and play longer? Who can keep the depth on their shot? Who can be braver? Great time to get the first serve and play 40 30 to go 5 all.
It's important to recognise in the match when it's your unforced error and when your opponent's played a great point, when you need to analyse what you can done better and where you just need to say too good and just move on to the next point. If you start dwelling on when your opponent's playing great, then it can start affecting how you play for the upcoming points. It was at this point in the match where I was really starting to feel quite tired having that match earlier on in the day really started to be challenging and I thought I really need to give everything in this first set to try and get the advantage because it's going to be tough to come back in the second set if the rally is going to carry on at this length and this intensity. like I played this point a lot better at 30 all being 6-5 down, stepping in using my forehand a lot more. Definitely took a braver mindset during that big point there. We can see at the start of this tie break, it's really just a battle of who's getting on the forehand more. And you really want to be that person who's hitting more forehands into that backhand side and getting the opponent moving. It's quite hard to recognise that in the moment because you're just trying to be solid, get the ball in play. But it's really important to be the one dictating with that forehand, especially when it's tight. Okay, big points like this where it's five all in the tiebreak is really where you can see the difference between people who are able to excel their game up to that pro level and people who are struggle. Are you able to make the right decisions at the biggest moments and keep your cool? really the area that, that could cost me the set here. Going down the line on the run when I'm off balance, really should be going cross court there. And then Patrick finishes the set with a clean volley. So overall that was a really, really tight set. Definitely could have gone either way. And then in order to win the second set, I need to keep the same level out on the court, keep making the same amount of first serves and keep trying to grind down every point and try and get as many balls in play as I can and get on my forehand as much as possible.
it was tough getting broken in that first game in the second set. Really gave Patrick the confidence he needed after winning that tight first set and now holding his serve to go two love up. I started to definitely lack in a bit of confidence and that definitely showed within the shots that I was hitting. Not quite getting enough on the ball and then didn't have that confidence to make that one extra shot and be as brave as I did in the first set. I think tiredness played a part in the second set. It's not really an excuse for dropping my level to this much. Because um, if I'm going to be playing futures, then you're going to have to play two matches in one day, playing at this level in both matches against that standard of opponent. As we can see here in rallies like this, it's, it's not like I dropped off massively, but it's just that 5% difference. Patrick up his game by 5%, my level dipped by 5%, and that's the difference between having a tight first set where it's 7-6 and being 2-love, 3-love down with games running away from you. If you just looked at the scoreline, you'd think that there was a, a massive change in the first set and the second set, but really it was just a few shots here and there and then a few big points that I didn't put my best level on the court or didn't make enough first serves. I definitely think at this point in the match, being full love down now, I definitely felt the pressure of the scoreline on me. I feel like if I had more of an objective mind, feeling like I'm only playing that 5% worse than I did in the first set, if I can up my level by 5% again, then I can creep these games back in. But I think the, the, the thought of having to go from full love down to trying to win this set to then potentially having to play a third set really got to me and I, and I let tiredness take over in this match. So that was definitely something to really work on, being able to keep performing under fatigue. And I think when you have this much of a scoreline advantage, then you can really let loose in your shots and you can really feel the confidence. You don't second guess. Maybe you go for more on that second serve return. Maybe you start going for winners when you didn't in the first set and it'll pay off because you've got that confidence within you. Okay, so there we have it, that was the match. I kind of asked myself the question, am I ready to try and get my first ATP point? And the answer is yeah, kind of. I feel like there's a lot of areas in my game that still need improvement, but I think the main thing is that I need to consistently put my level on the court throughout the course of a whole match. I feel like I can do it in stages for a set, and even though I was a bit tired in the second set of this match, I still need to be able to put that level out consistently over and over again. And I think that really comes down to my first serve percentage and am I controlling the points after that first serve. I feel like the rest of my game, my consistency, my returning is there and it's ready. Am I able to consistently put my first serve down on the court over and over again and be able to be in a controlling position after that? I feel like that still has a little bit of a gap. However, I feel like I am ready to try and go out and compete on that future circuit. And I feel like that will come with more experience. So if you enjoyed watching this match, please subscribe and I'll be putting out lots more matches like this and keep on tracking my journey.